Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Friday, I guess, slash Saturday edition of the Orange and Brown Talk podcast, depending on when you're listening to this. Uh, take you behind the scenes here real quick. So we were getting ready to record. We had some ideas of what we were going to talk about. And then we come to find out that the Browns were one of a handful of teams that uh, attended Odell Beckham Jr.'s workout today in Arizona. So I'm here with Mary Kay Cabot and Ashley Bastock. We're going to do... I don't know if I'd call this an emergency pod, but we got to talk about Odell Beckham Jr. when the opportunity presents itself. So, uh, Mary Kay, you you literally just put up a story on Cleveland.com about this. So wh- what can you tell us about this Odell Beckham Jr. workout? Well, you know, it's funny because I spent the afternoon, uh, you know, doing my diligence on other receivers that are on their radar. I didn't I knew this this workout was going on. I didn't even ask Uh, anybody about it to see if the Browns were going because I did not think there was any way in heck that they would be interested in attending this workout. I guess I just thought, you know, the Odell Beckham Jr. ship has sailed. uh, That is over. There's too much water under the bridge and, uh, and that's it. So, you know, I just did not think that, that they would be very interested, but lo and behold, they're doing their diligence Uh, They are looking into him as, uh, you know, as a possibility, someone to just keep tabs on. Sometimes you, uh, you know, you just keep tabs on a guy in the event that deals with other teams fall through or you have an injury. You know, they wanted to go get some eyeballs on him. I don't think anything is imminent with Odell Beckham Jr., but it is very significant that they went to the workout. Ashley, what was your first thought <laughs> when we, we were sitting there getting ready to hit record literally and then saw a tweet about it? What was your first thought when, when that came out? Yeah, well, I think at first, kind of like Mary Kay, I was kind of surprised given everything that had happened here and all the history he has in Cleveland and the way things ended. But as we took this little half hour break, 45 minute break, whatever it was, um, I I started to think about it more and I'm like, you know what? It makes sense that they would do their due diligence on something like this because we know how this front office operates now and that they kind of like to leave no stone unturned. Uh, He's going to be one of the most sought after receivers in this free agency cycle, number two. And I think when you look at what the Browns need, in theory, he is a guy that fits their needs. He's that kind of fast, twitchy receiver. And of course, I think now when I started thinking about it more and the obvious is his main issue here, it felt like, was with Baker Mayfield and the way there was really no chemistry with them and the way this offense was kind of running with Baker Mayfield at the helm. It's a totally new offense now with Deshaun Watson. So I think it's reasonable to think, eh, well, the the thing he had a problem with is gone. Maybe there's a chance here that it's worth doing the due diligence on because he kind of fits your on-the-field needs given his skill set. So Mary Kay, I, you know, Ashley mentioned that half hour while we, you know, in between when we were going to pod and when we actually hit record. And I tried over that half hour to talk myself out of like, how significant is it? Right. Cause sometimes, you know, you see something and instantly it's like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then a little bit of space and time. It's kind of like, well, maybe this doesn't matter as much as we think. I haven't done that yet. To me, it's, if you're going to take time to go watch a workout, you know, whoever it is that you sent there, um, it, it does matter. Like it, there were only 11 teams there. It wasn't like the entire league. It it was carving out time from someone's day to go do this. So to me, this is pretty significant. Yeah. And now I do know that Brown's GM, Andrew Barry did not go and Kevin Stefanski did not go. So they sent someone else. I don't know who yet. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there'll be a a photo on social media, or we'll see something uh, that will tell us, you know, who it was that was there. And that might also give us a little bit of an indication of what they're thinking and how serious they might be about something like this. But I do also think that there's no way that they would have gone out there to this workout if they didn't have some indication that Odell Beckham Jr. would like to, to play here again and play with Deshaun Watson. Now, as I'm going through my own due diligence and reporting on the receivers, there are a lot of veteran receivers that want to come and play with Deshaun Watson. Uh, He's one of uh, the few elite quarterbacks, the real top, top tier elite quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, You know, these guys, you know, they're hard to come by where you have an opportunity to play with these guys. They're career makers. I mean, if you can, you know, get out there and catch 
uh, you know, eight touchdown passes from Deshaun Watson, you're going to make millions and millions of dollars. So players want to play with him. Brandon Cooks wants to come here and play with him. He is on the radar. DeAndre Hopkins wants to come here and play with him. Uh, I wouldn't have him on the radar maybe as much as I have a Brandon Cooks. You know, they're really not trying to go and find a, an older receiver like that. I think that they'd probably be more apt uh, to try to trade for an Elijah Moore or find a younger speedy receiver like that. And that's uh, Elijah Moore of the Jets. Um, but nevertheless, you know, they are keeping all of their possibilities open. And I do think it's meaningful that, um, you know, that Deshaun, I mean, that Odell would want to play with Deshaun. Yeah, as I'm trying to think.